In our story today, the disciples' feet got really dirty and Jesus was willing to kneel down and wash their feet. Again, Jesus was doing more than just being kind. He was setting an example for us and giving us a picture of what he plans to do in our lives today. Our good friend Justice is going to talk to us a little more about that right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. Hey guys, I'm Justice. Have you ever gotten so messy that you needed a garden hose to clean off? Sometimes it's fun just going out and playing football in the mud or maybe even jumping from puddle to puddle in some heavy rain. But imagine instead of getting cleaned up right away, you just went about your day normally. You go to school, church, or maybe even a friend's house, just all covered in dirt. That's kind of what the disciples went through every day. Jesus' disciples, his closest friends, walked from city to city on dusty roads in the hot sun. So they got a bit messy, but their feet were messier than anything else. And they didn't have fancy shoes like these. They had these. To show you what they might have gone through, I'm gonna get a bit messy. Ugh, it's in between my toes. Ugh. Jesus' disciples had to deal with this all the time. But did you know that we deal with this kind of thing too? We may not have super gross feet, but some of us are carrying a mess with us. The mess of sin. Sin is when we go our way over God's way and it separates us from him. It makes our spirits dirty and messed up, a lot like the disciples' feet and mine. Even though we didn't deserve it, Jesus still paid the price for our sin. We can't get rid of sin on our own, we need him. Jesus is the creator of the universe. He's more powerful than anything that can stand between us and God. Say yes to Jesus and give your life to him. When we tell Jesus we've sinned and ask him to save us, the Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our mess gets cleaned. The same night that Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he told them this in John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In this verse, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's also talking to us. When we let Jesus save us and choose to follow him, we become his disciples too. We are to love others just like Jesus loves us. But how do we do that? If you want to love like Jesus loved, just look again at what he did. He stepped into our world got into our situation and was willing to lay his life down for us to be free. Is there someone that you know who isn't free? Maybe they're carrying a burden that's keeping them from the joy and peace that God promises all of us. You can be like Jesus to that person. That's why we're saying this today. Every day I reflect Jesus to others. We can reflect Jesus by doing what he did. Step into their world Ask them about what they're going through and set aside a part of your life so that you can focus on serving them. Remind them how much Jesus loves them and cares for them. He's ready to fix their mess, just like he fixed yours. Justice talked about how just like Jesus got rid of his disciples' mess, he's ready to get rid of yours. Are you allowing Jesus to clean your mess? Or do you think you can handle it on your own? You can trust that Jesus wants to take your mess and is able to handle whatever you throw his way. I would encourage you to talk to your parent or small group leader about what you need to let Jesus clean in your life so you can live more like him. Also, take time this week to think of someone you know who's carrying a burden with them. Step into their mess just like Jesus stepped into yours and lead them closer to Jesus by loving them and treating them just like he would. If you're not sure how to do that, talk with your parents or small group leaders about how you can best show someone the love of Jesus. 